Radiant Team Band. Hey hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I'm bringing you guys this game. Ah, sorry. Jeez. Sorry, I had to rush to do things, my bad. Um, I'm bringing you guys this game, and I'm actually casting for these guys, and what's it called? It's an event remaining. called Dota Spotted. I think that is the name of the event. I'm going to therefore go forth and say that that is the name of the event, but we got some pretty awesome games going on because we're in the semifinals, which means that all these teams have made it through their brackets, and they are here to compete to see who gets that coveted first place, who gets to claim all the victory and all the glory, and also the prize of something, which I can look up on the site, because I have it right here. It's very convenient. Give me a second. Let's see, the prize is. Dire mm -hmm. team ban. Mm -hmm. Can't tell fast enough. Um, I'll exit admin and maybe he'll tell me later. Um, but for now, like I said, just these two teams, Zebra Kingdom versus Muyong. They're gonna be going toe to toe to see who gets into the Radio final play or who gets into the finals to actually go for that first place prize. But first, we gotta get through this best of one for these guys to see who wins. So as far as the bands that we see so far. Uh, relatively standard bands. You get the Lycan, he's actually become more of a standard band nowadays because people just hate playing against that push. Ember Spirit, he just does so much damage for free essentially if he gets those uh, slide of fists off at the right pos uh, best possible time, which usually happens, especially when I'm playing and I'm playing support and Ember Spirit is not on my team and he kills me in one hit. But let's not talk about my troubles, guys. Let's talk about the troubles in this game because we got an Invoker first pick by Zebra Kingdom. And that is going to be a big issue for Mu Young, depending on how they decide to play. Um, Invoker is a very versatile hero. Um, generally, nowadays, you see him play as a Klaus Lex. You don't really see all that Klaus X or stuff that you used to see in the past. Um, but Klaus Lex Invoker has a ton of control, and he can do a whole bunch just to make your whole entire team life or team fight life a pain. But on the flip side, of that, we got Mu Young. They picked up a Bat Rider and a Storm Spirit, which I think are intelligent bands versus an Invoker. Because Storm Spirit, he's a natural, or he can build an Orchid Malevolence and not be too terribly off the ball. <laughs> Get it off the ball, off the ball lightning. Yeah, okay. All right, I agree. That was a forced joke. Um, but Storm Spirit, he can build himself an Orchid naturally, and Invoker will struggle very greatly once he gets hit with an Orchid. So that'll be a nice person to go against. Bat Rider, his lasso is going to be really nice versus Invoker, or Versus somebody else who might be a little bit more of a trouble, like the carry that Zebra Kino decided to pick up. But for the most part, Storm and Bat Rider, I think those are solid pickups versus what they're seeing so far. Um, but on the bands on the side of Mu Young's side, they ban out the Nyx Assassin and the Dazzle. They're trying to stop some of that early, or not that early, that mid game pressure coming up from Nyx Assassin's Vendetta. Um, it does do a lot of damage to all your supports, and it does become a big issue. Uh, once you get to the point where he gets a Dagon 5, like he literally has nothing but Arcane Boost, Dagon 5, and Vendetta. And he can just destroy your whole entire team. Well, he can destroy one person on your team, which throws you off quite a bit and makes you very upset. <clears throat> and in the Dazzle, well, people are loving that negative armor strat. Um, I've seen a lot of people pick up Dazzles, then they pick up the Vigil Spirit, and then they follow it up with the Slaughter. And it's a very deadly thing, because VS, she has the extra damage coming out from her aura, plus the negative, like, 6 or 7 armor. Dazzles ulti is negative armor city right there, and Slaughter ulti, same thing, negative armor city. By the time you get hit by anybody, once you get hit with, the, like, Dazzle ult, um, Slaughter, Amplify damage, and also Vigil Spirit's Wave of Terror, Radiant you're pretty much getting man. hit for, like... A ton of damage every time they right click you. It uh, doesn't matter how much HP you have, it will go away very, very, very fast. So, having Dazzle Band out makes a lot of sense. Also, Shallow Grave is a big problem too uh, once you get into those team fights and you get tunnel vision. 10 seconds remaining. So, Zebra Kingdom decided to pick up a Centaur War Runner, right, which we've been seeing a lot of. I guess now is just a common thing to see. Um, Blink Stomp is still a really nice thing. Reserve. He has a lot of survivability for a person who is usually jumping into the middle of the fight, so he's a perfect candidate for initiator. And on top of that, he can make anybody an initiator with his ulti or help somebody run away uh, when, the th when the slows get thrown. Uh, which, so far, there's only two slows on the side of Muyong, which I guess is about average. Uh, Storm Spirit has his little overload slow, and also Barrett has a sticky napalm, which does slow you a little bit. So, having that to just kite against all the slows is kind of nice but it's not that big of a deal it's not really used for that it's just kind of used for initiating those fights and just getting everybody in there to uh punch Mu Young in the face many times until they you know submit and die because that's kind of how it happens guys that's what Dota's about it's a very violent game a very dangerous place and it is not a place for the weak of heart or the weak of mind unless well unless you're Horde if 
If you, if you're Horde, then yeah, you can you can live here with your mind and with your heart. And that's an inside joke for you guys. You guys probably won't get it, but if Horde's listening, which he probably won't be listening, he'll probably be raging Five right now. seconds remaining. Um, Horde is an admin for stuff that we do and other things. That's all you guys need to know. Reserve. Anyway, Life Stealer got ba um, banned out by Zebra Kingdom. Um, he does do really well versus Centaur because Life Stealer has this ability called Life Leech, and basically whenever he hits you, or not Life Leech, Radiant Feast, team. and whenever he hits you, it basically does a percentage of your HP at that current level or at that current point in time as damage. And for Centaur, he feels especially a lot of damage because he has a lot of HP. So 5% of Centaur's HP versus 5% of uh, Rubik's HP, it's a big Radiant difference. Radiant team pick. Shadow Summon was also the ban out by Zebra Kingdom, trying to stop as much push as freaking possible. They ban out the Lycan and the Shadow Shaman. So, these guys might want to go for some 4 Protect 1 type stuff. They already got the Invoker, who's perfectly in place to be the whole, a whole entire two people with all the control well, nah, with all the control that he can throw out. And Centaur Warrunner, he has a lot of control as far as his Blink Stomp and his Centaur ult is really nice as well. And he also has a nice nuke. So, Zebra Kingdom might be going for that late game carry. And they also pick up a Sand King, which is very sustainable as far as team fights go. Uh, when a team fight breaks out and Sand King's involved, he can usually do damage enough for two people because of the epicenter, but he has to get the epicenter off. And he has to also get a beautiful burrow strike. So l I'm looking forward to see how fast Centaur and Sand King can get those blink daggers because until they get those, they won't really be that effective, in my honest opinion. But hey, I mean, maybe Sand King can get a nice burrow strike and Centaur can just. Waltz on up and Ten get a nice little centaur remaining. stomp, or maybe Invoker gets that tornado to set them up, so it won't be that big of a Five deal. We'll just have to remain. see how Zebra Kingdom decide to play, and then we'll go from there. Reserve time. On the side of Mu Yang, they picked up the Ancient Apparition, which is always exciting to see. That ulti is freaking amazing, especially when he has Agon Scepter. Especially if you're versus somebody who has a bunch of heals, such as a Dazzle, such as a Wish Doctor, such as a. Well, those ones I can think of. But Dazzle's already banned now, so it doesn't really matter. But when the team fights do break out, Ancient Apparition can toss that ulti and just catch everybody, and that means no more region for you for at least six to seven seconds. And uh, Muyan, they also pick up the Earthshaker, which is really nice initiator, cool stuff, blah, 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 blah. But let's talk about Anti Mage. Because Anti Mage is that carrier that you usually have a 4 Protect 1 strat around. And I wasn't going to call it, because I've been seeing a lot of other carries play in that spot, such as, well, other carries. I can't think of anybody as soon as I say that. Oh yeah, such as Doomer, such as Life Stealer, such as Ember Spirit. Radiant Playing that 4 Protect 1 type strat. Oh, Medusa, she's the one too. But Zebra Kingdom decided to go for the Anti Mage, which is going to be really nice for them. Because they have, like I said, a very, very, very 4 Protect 1 esque type strategy with the Invoker and also with the Sand King. Centaur, he's just there because he doesn't die that easily. <clears throat> and they also ban out a lot of push, which is usually a sign that 4 Protect 1 is about to happen. Because, uh,. The idea behind 4 Protect 1 is literally 4 people protecting one person that farms the whole entire game until the last 20 minutes of the game, or 10 minutes of the game, assuming the game lasts 60 minutes or 50 minutes, and then that person comes out the jungle and kills everybody. Anti Mage, perfect candidate for that because once he gets a Manta Style, Butterfly Heart, and BKB, he's usually impossible to kill. And it's kind of silly because a lot of times you don't even see Anti Mage get to bother to get the BKB because by the time you have a Heart, Butterfly, Manta Style, and also presumably you have yourself a a blade people just can't stop you i mean you can blink away things go bad and if somebody does chain stun you you won't die because you have the spell shield you also have a bunch of hp to deal with everything remaining. and you can just blink away with a whole entire what i uh, put a whole entire 1150 distance between you and the enemy <clears throat> so it's all cool stuff and uh, I like the fact that Muyan picked up the Bloodseeker. I fear for the late game, of course, because it's the Anti Mage, but the Bloodseeker is going to be a nice pickup because Anti Mage, he will be in the jungle uh, for a little bit. He will be low at times, and Bloodseeker will be able to find him no matter where he goes. Uh, Skyrath Mage, also a nice little counter pickup to that, kind of like the new meta thing going on. The Skyrath has enough nukes to deal with Ancient Apparition, Storm Spirit, Batrider, Earthshaker, all at the same, same darn time. The only question is who will he be able to kill first? Who will he actually throw a silence on? And I think he should prioritize silences on top of either Batrider or Storm Spirit. I mean, Earthshaker, you want to you want to silence him before he gets a Fissure off, but usually after that point, I mean, it doesn't matter. He's probably going to get the rest of his stuns off. You're probably dead anyway. Ancient Apparition, he throws his ulti, and that's really about the extent of his usefulness. And Bloodseeker, you silence him, doesn't matter. He'll still find you, and he'll still kill you because he smells blood. Because that's his, that's what he, that's what he's all about. Time for preparations. So let's go ahead and get this game started. Let's get this party started. Starting off with the introductions on the side of MYG. 
Start off on this Storm Spirit, of course, we have Hyper R, or Hyper, <coughs> on that Storm. Moving on to this Bat Rider, who has some very, very swaggy looking hair. Wow, it's kind of cool. Almost looks like uh, Super Saiyan. Let's go Super Saiyan mode. Super Saiyan Bat Rider, we got Momo on that bat. Moving on to this Ancient Apparition, we have HNSCW, or History on that Ancient Apparition. On this Bloodseeker, who's going to be presumably playing in the jungle, or maybe playing in the tri lane. We see Quats on him, and last but not least, for the raiding side, we see Ifvin, I think it's Ifvin, or Lifvin, it's if, Ifvin, and there's a cause for them. Meanwhile, on the side of ZK, which actually we see a lot of them invading the jungle already, um, we got, on this invoker, we got Z, Zinsifi, yeah, Zinsifi. on that invoker. On the Skyrath Mage, who's looking pretty darn blind, uh, we see she. Kura... Shikai. Jeez, I cannot pronounce words, guys. I apologize. On this Antimage, we see Lala555666 on that Antimage. The battle begins. And on this Centaur Warner, we see Puff Puff on him. And last but not least, for the whole callouts on the entire map, we see Blank underscore on that Sand King. And that ends the calls now for these guys. Turn out. And guys, just by the way, if you guys aren't used to me butchering names by now, come on, something's wrong with you. That's all I gotta say. So we might see a level 1 kill, this will be an easy kill, I think Sand King should be the one to pick up this uh, haste rune, and it should be able to get an easy kill on top of the Storm Spirit mid, who can't really do anything but just drop an overload, which I'm actually, or Static Remnant, which is, I'm actually a little sad to see that he didn't save a skill point, but he will be facing an early death here if these guys do decide to go for it, which they should decide to go for it now. Looks like they're just going to wait, they're not going to go for it, C come on, come on guys, time's ticking. I'm waiting for Storm Spirit to come back a little bit. Invoker being a little bit too aggressive. The lane will be pushing towards the raiding side so Storm can live to fight another day. But as soon as this creep wave pushes in the opposite direction, they're going to go for it. Actually, they're going to start for it now. Sand King picked up the haste room. Skyrath Mage is around the corner. He has a concussive shot up already. I think Sand King needs to be the first one. And he's going to go ahead and dash right in. Storm Spirit is in a little bit of trouble. He will get hit with the cold snap. Here comes the death of Storm Spirit. Easy first blood is easy. They waited to Invoker level 2, so good patience on their part. And first blood is first blood. Storm Spirit is officially dead, and I think this lane is uh, now not necessarily impossible for Storm, but it's going to be very difficult now for Storm. Because Invoker is a whole entire level up, essentially, on top of Storm, and uh, also he's a lot richer. And that's his bottle. Oh no, it's the second blade of attack, never mind. Wait, yeah, this is a Quas Wex Invoker. No, 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 no. Hmm. Usually when you see Blades of Attack, you see... Yeah, Quas Wax, Quas Wax. Meanwhile, on top, we got Bat Rider going to be going now. Skyrath Mage plus Sand King did rotate up top. Anti Mage got himself a nice little assist. And my bad for missing that, guys, but I didn't see the rotations. I was trying to focus on what Invoker was getting. <coughs> and what I was going to say was usually when you see Invokers go Blades of Attack, they do go for uh, the Quas Wax, mainly because they don't really have that much damage. x Sword is Invoker's main source of damage as far as uh, stat points go. And if you don't have any instances of that, you have zero damage essentially, or not that much damage. So you go for the blades of attack to alleviate that a little bit. Uh, one blade of attack is equal to one point inside of Exhort. So two points, or sorry, two blades of attack equals two points in Exhort. So it's, it's it's like a nice little balancing act. It's kind of cool, kind of cool to see that happen. You know, rotations do come mid. Invoker might be in a little bit of trouble. We got the supports coming around the corner. Sanking plus uh, storm. Nah. Earthshaker plus Ancient Britain. Invoker does scout him out. Earthshaker got a little bit too too big for his britches. <clears throat> and these guys will be forced to back away. They will be forced to back away. Sad Earthshaker, sad. Because that would have been a nice kill too. Um, I don't know if Storm would have been able to do much except for go for a pull. And even at that point, I mean, I think Invoker might have been able to survive. Because he does have Quas Wex. He does move pretty fast. And he does have Tornado for counter initiation too. So all things considered, Invoker probably would have survived. Meanwhile, down bottom, Bloodseeker is having a nice little fun time, bathing in the blood, because that's what he does. Antimage bathes in money, Bloodseeker bathes in blood, it's only weird if you look at it weird, but everything's going well so far. He's getting his last hits going on. The Centaur Warner is effectively zoned out all the way back here, Puff Puff not having much fun. Meanwhile, top Barrator, he's actually doing pretty decently. Um, he did die once. Antimage and him are on the speaking terms as far as levels go, so it's not that big of a deal. And Barrator, he really just needs his go for his uh, four staff and or blink dagger first. And usually, see Barrators go for that <coughs> blink dagger first so he can get that uh, chasing potential. But even still, he can go, he can decide to go for that four staff if he really wants to. 
We'll have to wait and see. Me oh man, huh? Meanwhile, maybe we got Invoker taking a bunch of damage. He actually tried to go for a dive, did fail completely. And that was a nice little or ancient person might have been hanging out here the whole entire time. But they did get an easy kill on top of this invoker. And that officially puts Storm and Invoker one to one. And I think Storm is gonna have the better of that. Because if Invoker can get his levels earlier, then he can become a big dominating factor, sure. But I think Storm Spirit will have much more impact. Um, Invoker will be able to throw a tornado and EMP, and that'll be about it. Storm Spirit. He'll be able to zip in, pull your carry, then zip out if he gets in a little bit of trouble. And that's, I mean, it's really infinitely more useful, in my honest opinion. Uh, Invoker's going to need a lot more support from his team. And assuming that Anti Mage won't be involved in these fights until he gets his uh, Manta style, well or until it's 3 a.m., as we like to say. Get it 3 a.m., 3 Anti Mages. Uh, but once it's 3 a.m., then I think it'll be a lot of trouble for uh, MYG to get there. But that's going to take a long time for Anti Mage to get, especially if he decides to go for a battle for you first, which it seems to be what he's going for. I'm um, saving up that gold, 900 gold already. Already has enough point, or already has enough gold for that first piece, which is usually that ring of health. And boom, cool blue predicted it, guys. Yay, I'm pro at Dota. Meanwhile, Storm Spirit catching up on levels with these small camps. He will be able to hit level six off of this, and he will be able to go for initiation on top of somebody if he really wants to. Um, he has a courier bringing him something. Nope, courier just getting bottle, running super slow. Getting slowed by that uh, bottle. Meanwhile, TP does come bottom. And Jet Person trying to make sure Bloodseeker stays nice and safe. And Bloodseeker, speaking of nice and safe, is pretty darn nice and safe. And once he hits level 6, guys, it's going to be a, a destroying fest. He has many points inside of Thirst very early. Um, I'm not too terribly sure what the typical build for Bloodseekers are, but I'm pretty sure this Bloodseeker is going super aggressive. Three points is out of thirst already when you don't really smell any blood yet. Um, you, oh man, oh man, Earthshake gets himself a nice little stun on top of Centaur. Centaur is on the wrong side. Now we got Blessing smell smelling blood. Moving fast as all get out. They're gonna go for the kill on top of Centaur. Centaur will have another stomp here in eight seconds' time, but I don't know if it'll be fast enough. Quaz will be going for it anyway because he will be getting healed once he kills the Centaur. Centaur does officially go down, and there's a heal. Voker comes out of the corner. EMP tornado does catch Ancient Person off. Ancient Person does die. Now we got an Earthshake about to be dying as well. Nice rotation coming up from uh, Invoker. They're gonna try to go for the Blood Seeker. No TP follow up to actually catch him. So he will be able to be gone, but he did claim his kill on top of Centaur, but he lost two supports in the process, and I think that's a bad thing. Um, slowing down Centaur is good, so that means uh, there's no Centaur ulti, sure, but losing both your supports like that is not the most ideal of situations, as you guys can obviously tell. But at the very least, Barret on the other on the other end of the map, he's doing pretty well. Intimage, he's still getting annoyed, highly annoyed by all the uh, <coughs> stinky napalms, but he's doing fine too. And mid Storm Spirit, he was able to get, catch himself a region rune. So once he wants to be aggressive, he can just be super aggressive. Go for yeah, go for a kill on top of something. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him rotate up top. The pings do come on the map. They see the Earthshaker around the corner. Uh, Skyrath Mage will be promptly running away. So it's a nice little observer we're paying off for these guys. As you can see, they can see everything. And while we have a nice little lull in the game, let's go and take a look at these items. Because <coughs> we got Invokers working on an Orcus to go against a Storm, and Storm Spear is working on a Magic Wand. I was assuming that Storm Spear is going to be getting the Orcus to deal with Invoker. So it's actually kind of funny to see it the other way around. Uh, meanwhile, Antimage up top, he picks himself up some Tranquil Boots, which I find a little bit... Oh, sorry, Centaur, my bad. Centaur picks himself up a Tranquil Boots, which I was about to say is... If it was like Antimage, I was going to find it a little bit funny. Because uh, Tranquil Boots used to be like one of the go-to items for carries. Because it took four hits to break, and it didn't break when you right clicked. So you can just right click, take like two attacks, and then walk away with your region intact. But nowadays, since once you attack, it goes away, and also once you get hit, it goes away, it's really only good for people who just need sustainable sustainable HP region at uh, times of dire need. Which I think Centaur is a perfect person for it, because he doesn't lose a bunch of HP when he does his double edge. Well, okay, he loses a bunch of HP when he does his double edge. But he shouldn't lose too terribly much to where he's like in dire need of the region, so he'll be able to wait it out. Especially considering how dangerous this bottom lane is. Meanwhile, towards the rune, we got Sand King and Storm Spirit. 
Just contesting the room with one another. Me, oh man, up top. Bloodseeker so throws out the ultimate on top of, uh, on top of Ancient Mage. Ancient Mage will be in a little bit of trouble. No TP coming out. Skyrath Mage is around the corner. Silence does come on top of Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker gets triple silence. He will be going down dead. Bloodseeker is dead. Meanwhile, Storm Spirit comes up. Ancient Mage taking a bunch of damage. Storm Spirit not going to be able to finish off the kill. We got these guys going for Skyrath Mage. Skyrath Mage getting body blocked by the creeps. He does officially go down. The Fissure able to finish him off. No nope, Storm Spirit with the right click able to finish him off. Meanwhile, the heal does come through. Ancient Person looking for something. Not going to be able to find anything because he is out of mana right now. Storm Spirit plus Ancient Person will be dying. Actually, no, just Ancient Person. No. Ancient Mage not able to get that kill. Tornado from Evoker does fly. Ancient Person does get picked off at the end of the day. So nice little play coming up from these guys. And that is one of the beauties of a Quas Wex Invoker. The amount of control that you get in a team fight. The Cold Snap, the Tornado, the EMP, just so, so, so deadly versus a team who needs, who's so reliant on mana. Uh, when you have the Storm Spirit plus Ancient, or Ancient Apparition. <clears throat> and also so fragile. Ancient Apparition only has Boots of Speed. So he's not the most survivable of people. No Bracer yet. So he only has about 500 HP, which I think is, that's what Invoker does when he sneezes. And by sneezes, I mean throws a tornado. So Bloodseeker losing his life after throwing out a Rapture. Usually when, you, usually when you see a Rapture happen, you want to have the kill go down. You want to have the kill go in your favor, but that is one of the most awkward situations I've seen. So nice response coming up from the supports of ZK. Give them credit where credit is due, most definitely. <coughs> And speaking of supports, uh, the supports are in the jungle farming. I totally forgot to mention that part. But Skyrath and Sand King are just having a nice little ball. Sand King doing some Sandstorm farming, because it's still kind of effective. Especially since Sandstorm's range is, what, uh, 525? So, pretty darn huge. And he will be able to kill all these things. That one's dead. Illusion. So yeah, Centaur taking a little bit of damage. Um, I'm assuming he's going to be going for Blink Dagger right after, or right after all the stuff that he's built already. So we'll see that happen very soon. That'll be really nice to see. Meanwhile, Storm, oh crap, sorry. Meanwhile, Storm Spirit and Earthshaker mid, looking for an Invoker. Invoker gonna go and drop an EMP in the trees. He's still, he's on the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker does get hit with a little bit of damage. And now these guys will be back in the ways. Nice little play coming off these guys. Invoker doing an intelligent thing, dropping an EMP. I think EMP gives you vision. <clears throat> but dropping the EMP in the area, seeing the Bloodseeker there, TPing out instead of trying to run away, because he knows running is officially useless. Especially when you have that much damage coming in that far forward. And Shepard's been placing Sentry Wars, trying to deal with a little bit. Probably wondering where the heck the supports wards are. They're not going to be able to find it. The um, walking camp getting pulled. I don't think they'll be getting aggro. Nope, Batrider gets himself a nice little pull. He got his blink dagger already. Scarf Mage in a little bit of trouble. Anti Mage is around the corner though, and I think Batrider is now officially in trouble. Scarf Mage drops the ulti, misses everything. Storm Spirit comes forward. Since our War Runner ulti does go through, Anti Mage and crew run away very, very, very safely. And everything just ends like that. Batrider reveals the fact he has a blink dagger. He also reveals the fact that, um. Well, yeah, he just reveals the fact that he's a Blink Dagger. Also reveals the fact that his ultimate is cooldown. Now we got Urshaker taking a bunch of damage. He will be going down here very soon. Batrider shows up. Not going to be able to do anything. Ancient Mage is able to pick up a kill. No, Invoker able to pick up a kill on top of that Urshaker. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And, yeah, the Dyer just doing a good job of their rotations. That's really what it's coming down to. Um, the Radiant are doing everything they can to try to pick out the kills that they need. Like, Anti Mage, he almost got killed that one time when Plastic Raptured. But the rotation from the supports was not only there, but they were pretty much, like... They're pretty much stationed there. They're just hanging out, making sure Intimates gets all the fun he needs. So ZK playing this strategy of 4 Protect 1 extremely effectively. And I think Intimates is getting ready to make a payout for him. Almost has his battle for you up. Gonna have two pieces here very soon. Or sorry, three pieces here very soon. Already has two pieces up. And they're pinging the middle map. They want to go for this. MYG wants to claim his tower. Ancient Apparition is mid. Not level 6 just yet, which I think I definitely need. Because there's been a lot of people who survived with just like, just a tiny bit of HP. And now that I think about it, that combination is actually pretty darn, or pretty darn, uh, for lack of a better word, pretty darn swanky. If you think about it, Ancient Apparition ulti flies on top of you. And you can't heal. And then Bloodseeker smells blood. So you can't do anything while Bloodseeker just gets all kinds of buffs. Which actually makes it a little bit sad. Because I haven't seen ZK take that much take that much damage to where Bloodseeker just smells blood all the time. Like, all the supports have been extremely responsible as far as keeping himself nice and healed. Uh, Antimage, he's about to get low. Bloodseeker will officially smell blood. They know that he's here. I think Antimage is going to start running away, running on home. Meanwhile, I heard somebody. Barrett just killed Invoker. 
My bad. Barry just killed a Vulcan Bridge. This chase on Antimage is what I really want to see because Blood Seeker, if he can actually get this kill, Antimage will be a huge, huge, huge pickoff for him. They're going to be able to find a Rapture. will fly through. Rapture does not fly through in time. And Blood Seeker does still smell blood, though. I'm not too sure from where. Looks like he smells it from Sand King. The Ancient Emperor's ulti does fly. It does. It will miss. And the Rapture does fly through because Bloodseeker still smells blood. He's going to go for the kill. Sand King will be going now. Sand King Sandstorm is not going to be enough because Bloodseeker sees you while you're invisible. Centaur shows up, gets healed with stun, and now the Middle Tower will officially be going down. They're pinging it pretty darn hard. They want to get that tower. The TP does come mid. It's going to be from an Invoker who is going to get silenced up immediately. The Centaur will want to ulti fly through to make sure Invoker can keep going. And these guys will be going for the chase quads. He's not going to be having the best of times because he's getting caught with the Tornado plus EMP. No more mana for you. No more HP for you. And now you're officially dead. Meanwhile, Barret on the other side trying to slow these guys up a little bit not gonna be enough it looks like somebody picked up a haste and that's a bat rider <laughs> not who you want to have pick it up you know i got uh, skylar plus crew coming forward with a bat rider bat rider getting called in the worst way possible does officially go down the magic damage is too great from these guys and haste or not he's still gonna be dead and i swear i changed his camera speed oh. okay I don't know, the camera seems a lot faster than it should be to me. Ancient Empress ulti gonna fly mid. Invoker taking a bunch of damage. Blessed are not gonna smell blood just yet because Invoker has a little bit too much HP. Tornado flies out immediately. <clears throat> Does miss everything. Quats looking for some blood. Not gonna be able to find any. He's looking for a rapture actually. Not gonna be able to find it. A little bit a little bit too far away. And also he keep, he kept getting fogged. Kinda sucks for him. Radiance bottom tower has uninvited. So taking a look at the gold graph, we can see that the gold graph is in favor of ZK as we kind of expected. To be honest, um, they've been doing really well. Like I said before, with the rotations, Antimage is getting a crap ton of farm, and he's doing really well with all of that. And his, oh man, Sorcerer is going to zip forward. They're going to catch Invoker. Invoker in a little bit chill. Blessing ulti flies on him as well. Invoker getting silenced up on the back side of that. And Ancient Empress ulti will fly through just to make sure they get the kill. Boom goes the dynamite. They do officially catch the Centaur Warren who's forced to pop that ulti. Blessing, he does smell blood, but he cannot act on it because Centaur is a little bit too far away. And that's going to be the end of it. They're going to go ahead and claim this middle tower and call it a day. Blessing does have the extra damage coming out from that. Oh, getting slowed. Doesn't really matter. But Bloodseeker does have the extra damage coming up from that thirst. And he also has a Yasha. He's going for the SNY, which is a phenomenal item for a person. A lot of people like to say it's a subpar item, but I still think it's a really good item. <coughs> and the main reason for that is because Sanji and Yasha gives you that ability. That potential. Oh man, Hosanki blinking forward. Gonna get himself a nice little stun on top of nobody. Stormsbury and Bloodseeker do zip on out just in time. But Sanking officially revealing the fact that he has himself a blink dagger. And Antimage revealing the fact that he has himself a battle for you, so get ready for 20 minutes of Antimage farm. That's right guys, you came to this tournament to watch some Farming Simulator 2014. I'm your host, Cool Blue, as we watch Antimage farm the jungle. Exciting. Such excitement. Look how exciting this is. It's great, isn't it? It's gonna go farm the Ancients now. Oh my gosh, so much fun. Look! Ah, oh, I wish I was there. Anyway, alright, enough trolling around. <coughs> Antimage actually bought himself a uh, Ring of Region, so I think he's bought himself a Hood of Defiance. I'm not too sure. He might just be doing that for some passive region. He might be going for the Vladimir's Offering, which if he does go for the Vlads, I will think... Not, not less of him, but I'll just think a little bit strangely of him. Meanwhile, down bottom, we got a big fight happening. We got Stormsweet getting caught on the Ancient Emperor's or, or Skyrath, Matt, ah, Skyrath ulti. Sand King coming for a blink, Burrow Strike. He's gonna be able to catch a few people. Earthshaker with the follow up on top of that. Bloodseeker forced to run away. No, he is smelling blood right now, so he's gonna be moving pretty darn fast. But it's not gonna be enough to kill anybody else. And I think I missed these initiations because I spend too much time trying to be funny. My bad, guys. Don't worry, don't worry, it'll get better. It'll get better. Or so they say. Or so they say. Top tower for the Dyer, taking a bunch of damage from Barrow. He will be able to claim that last hit. And he blinks on the way. Me one down bottom. <clears throat> the fact that Sand King has a blink dagger should be blatantly obvious for MYG, so they need to be a little bit careful about those initiations now. Because uh, between Sand King and Invoker, they have initiation power enough for everyone. <clears throat> and that's creating so much room for Antimage to farm. And Antimage is in fact going for the Vladimir's Offering, which, eh, meh, meh, eh, that's all I have to say about it. 
In my honest opinion, Vladimir's offering is nice, uh, especially when you're going against a Blessing who's trying to catch a whole bunch of damage, or who gets a f whole bunch of free damage from you because you're low, and if you can keep yourself from getting to that level where you're actually low, then you'll be fine. But, at this point in the game, I think it's a little bit too late for Vladimir's offering. I mean, it's not it's not like the latest battle for you I've ever seen. It's not a huge mistake, but it is something that where I'm like, okay, you're not building a... You're building a Vladimir's offering, which means that you're not building Yasha, which... If he's not building Yasha, that means he's a lot further away from his uh, Manta style, which I think is probably one of the, bi the biggest items for him to actually pick up. Um, he definitely needs to have himself a Manta style. Definitely needs to have himself all the damage. Meanwhile, we got a fight happening down bottom. Stormsweep picks up a wild Scarf Maze. Scarf Maze, he will actually be able to survive. He's somehow still alive. Trying to juke a little bit of damage. Not going to be able to juke enough. Barrow to force that. Blink stab. Nah, blink tag force stab. Pulls him broken. Broker gonna kill himself. Stun, stun from Earthshaker from the side. Sent our world in a little bit of trouble. Getting chain stunned to death. He will officially be going down. And that is the end of the fight. MYG finally got the fight that they wanted. They're finally going to be able to claim this tower. And they can actually continue to push and claim this other tower. Because uh, Bloodseeker, he may not be a Lycan. He may not be a Shadow Summon. But he can still push towers pretty darn effectively. Mainly because he does get that free damage coming out from that Blood Rage. So they're going to go ahead and ping these towers. TPs do come down bottom to defend. Bloodseeker going to go farm. Good, good on him. Good on him. Oh yeah, Barrow's good at pushing too. Dyer's bottom tower is in With the creature at least. Not, not necessarily killing towers. His damage is uh wanting, for lack of a better word. They're gonna go ahead and go in mid. Antimage in a little bit of trouble. Antimage is also flying through. Gonna be able to catch Antimage and also hit him a little bit of damage, but not enough to keep him down. And like I said, he does have the Vladimir's Offering. He is officially working on his Yasha, which I still think is a silly thing that he got a Vladimir's Offering first. Um, yeah, he can get the region from that, but if you want region that bad, just get yourself... Well, okay, you have region enough. You have the battle theory. No, no, Antimage just make sure he's staying safe. A uh, safety measure, sure. It's gonna benefit Centaur and Sanking. Okay. And I guess I can't complain too terribly much because... Oh, wow. What? I was, gonna, I was about to say, um, I guess I can't blame Antimage too terribly much because uh, Vladimir's Offering is usually thought of as a mid-game item, and it is still technically mid-game. Wait, wait, Antimage is heading up top to go for the farm. Storm Spirit is stalking him, looking for the Antimage. Not gonna be able to find him. Antimage very intelligently picking himself up a TP scroll. <laughs> and we got a smoke game coming on down bottom of the jungle. Centaur and Invoker and crew are gonna be running on down. Invoker does have his uh, a lot of points in Wex, so he is moving more fast when he is invisible, so it's actually kinda cool. They're gonna be able to find the Barrow. The Barrow does get four or four times himself four. TP's out immediately because he smelled or he saw trouble. He saw the smoke get revealed. So nobody will be able to find anything. And they're going to go just go ahead and farm the jungle. Farm the jungle while they can. Place some observable in the jungle to make sure they can see where everybody comes into the jungle to farm. Because Bloodseeker will likely be here trying to catch those levels. Trying to catch that farm. And he almost has a BKB. Which BKB for Bloodseeker is equivalent to me. Uh, sorry. On the same level as a Manta style for Antimage. There are a lot of reasons why Antimage needs a, a Manta style, and one of those reasons is to make sure he can actually kill Bloodseeker fast enough. Because Bloodseeker wants you to, oh man, hold on, somebody's in the jungle. This is going to be a wild Ancient Apparition, going to be going now. Starting that TP, not going to be in time. They're going to come on forward. Bloodseeker catches a blood or catches a nice little rapture on top of Sand King. Not low enough, he has, oh, actually, he is low enough. They're going to be able to get this kill on top of this uh, Sand King. And now they're going to try to go on top of this Bloodseeker. Not going to be able to catch him. Earthshaker will be the one going down. Antimage does get the last hit. No, somebody got the last hit on top of that. Meanwhile, we got somebody getting pulled into the worst spot possible. Antimage, uh, Volker does officially get on the fight. Happening all over the place. Ancient Mage not gonna be able to do too terribly much. Forced to blink out. Skyrath Mage forcing him away. And now Centaur Roar Runner. Centaur Roar Runner a little bit chill. Bloodseeker smells the blood. Gonna go for the silence. Trying to go for the right click. One right click. Two right click. Three right click is what he needed, but it doesn't really matter. Barrow did help out the damage. And then we all zip forward coming out from uh, Storm Spirit. Not gonna be able to find it. And I think the last person to survive was Ancient Mage. And he is too darn far away for them to actually do anything. But this is kind of one of the drawbacks to not having as much damage as you had before. Um, I'll give Antimage credit where credit is due. He is able to stay nice and healthy because of that Vladimir's offering. And now he officially has his Yasha, so it's not that big of a deal. <clears throat> but if he would have had a Manta style in that fight completed, I don't think he would have been able to do too terribly much anyway. So, like I said, give credit where credit is due. Not that big of a deal that he didn't go for a, a Manta style as fast as possible. Meanwhile, Bloodseeker, speaking of fast as possible, he will be dying as fast as possible. Sanking did pop an epicenter, not going to be able to do too terribly much. Uh, Bloodseeker in a lot of trouble, getting silenced up. The Orcus burn does happen while he's in the air, so he doesn't feel any damage. And now he's getting chased. He's going to be going down to the Sand King. Ancient Burst Ulti does fly through, catches the Sand King. That's really about it. And yeah, that just happened. So Bloodseeker, at least he already has two pieces to his BKB. Um, I want to say he had probably, I don't know how much gold he lose. Jeez, did he? I, I, I don't know if he lost 826 gold or they got 826 gold. 
But regardless of the fact, he was a lot closer to his battle fear or that uh, BKB before he died. So it makes it kind of sad to see that he's not all that close to it now. Looking at the rest of his items, Barrett, Blink Dagger, Force Stab, Boots of Travel is officially it's officially kidnapping time. That's what Barrett wants to do to you. He wants to kidnap you, pull you into the worst spot possible, and say, "Hey, I got some candy in a van. Let me show you what it's like." And then he kills you, because that's how it works in the movies. But Invoker has that Organ Malevolence, which is a nice item for him to have versus a Earthshaker, versus a Barret, and versus a Storm. But I don't think it's a nice item for him to have versus all three at the same time. Like, it's, it's kind of sucky. Especially especially the whole entire Storm Spirit thing, because that means Invoker is forced to use his ulti on top of Invoker. If he uses it on top of Bloodseeker, it's not going to matter. He can still run away. And, ooh. Never mind. I was supposed to say, ooh, Angel Pusher found himself an Invoker. Did not find himself an Invoker. The first point of XR getting picked up by Invoker, gonna go ahead and use it to get the Alkyrie, or Al Alkyrie, 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 anyway, Barrow to kidnap himself a Blessed Seeker, Blessed, or Antimage, Antimage in a lot of trouble, he will be going down, that's all that really matters, and he actually got silenced up by the Blood Rage, so nice little play coming out from these guys, Blessed Seeker says, bro, you can blink away, whenever you want, but just not right now, you're, you're gonna stay, you're gonna stay here and take this damage, and Barrow said, bro, I got candy in the van, let's go for it, meanwhile, see, speaking of let's go for it, Sand King blinking for it, gonna get immediately, Immediately slapped in the face. Actually, no, Storm Shaker getting immediately slapped in the face. The HF versus ulti flies through. Since we're in a little bit of a force to pop the ulti, Bloodseeker is officially alive, so he is smelling blood right now. He's moving fast as a crab. Look at this guy. Look at him go fast. He's going to be able to catch the Centaur Warner, not in time. Does still smell blood, though. And they're going to go down bottom, try to see if they can catch themselves somebody. They're going to be able to try to go for the kill on top of this uh, Invoker. Sadly, Bowers' ulti is on cooldown. HF versus coming around the corner. Not too sure if that's the corner he wants to be going around. But he is still, in fact, going around that corner. <laughs> And yeah, we're just kind of at that moment where both sides are ready to kill each other. Antimage not as farmed as he needs to be. Almost has his med style though, so that's, that's good. And Barret are forced to blink away and force that away. And he will live to fight another day. But on the flip side of all this, Invoker, he doesn't really have much of anything. He's working on a force staff now. The reason he went for Orchids so fast was to make sure Storm Spirit didn't have as much impact mid-game. Which I think is a good choice for him to pick up on. But it does force him to sacrifice uh, the fact that he doesn't have a force staff, which means that if he does in fact get caught out by a Storm Spirit or a Bat Rider or an Person or pretty much anybody, then he can't really escape. I mean, he can go invisible, but they probably have dust already. And as I say that, they have Sentry Wars. Okay, close enough. They have Sentry Wars and a Smoke Deceit. But for the most part, Invoker should <clears throat> shouldn't be able to get away as easily. Or he, um, he'll be able to get away a lot easier if he has himself a force staff. And he'll be able to initiate a lot better once he has a blink dagger if he does decide to go for that. Moving on to more important things. Antimage med style is currently finished. We'll see if he decides to go for the butterfly or if he decides to go for the heart. In my honest opinion, I would like to see him go for the butterfly and then go for a heart. Or at least go for the talisman of evasion and then go for the heart. Um, because he does need a lot of HP to survive all these nukes. Especially versus the, I guess, Earthshaker as far as nukes go, but if he gets himself a heart faster than he gets himself a butterfly, then he'll be able to actually make sure that Bloodseeker can never smell his blood. And that would be really nice. That'd be some really cool stuff. Or just make it more difficult for Bloodseeker to actually smell blood in the first place. Because he's a Bloodhound. Get it? Bloodseeker, Bloodhound. Bloodhound seek blood. Totally that's where they get the name from, right? They're totally vampires, right? True story, right? Okay, I'll stop saying that. Storm Spirit has himself an Invis Rune, which is very convenient for him. Since you were placed already to find the Invoker, Invoker's actually going to come around the corner. They do go forward. Bat Rider did see him. Uh, they do go forward. Not going to be able to find anything. Storm Spirit getting silenced up. Alright, so Ancient Person getting silenced up. He's taking a little bit of damage. Uh, Skyrim is taking a bunch of damage. He will be going on. Blessing can pick up the kill on top of that. Since our blink forward, catches a stun, catches two people. Blessing getting a little bit of trouble. BKB gets popped already. Lasso flies on top of Bat Rider. Uh, on top of Invoker. Bat Rider will be able to get himself a kill on top of Invoker. Invoker trying to run away. Not going to be able to do anything because his force staff's not finished. He does officially go down. Earthshaker ulti bounce on top of two people. Storm Spirit coming for a nice little silence on top of Centaur, but he does not, he's not able to silence the Sand King. Force staff four from. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Force staff four from Storm Spirit, but it doesn't really matter. Antimage is getting all kinds of damage. It's 3 a.m., but it's not soon enough. It is a little bit too early for Antimage right now. <clears throat> it is like, instead of being 3 a.m., it's like 2.30 a.m. right now. And Earthshaker was able to TP out. Only able to survive with just like 10 HP or something like that. One more right click is all Antimage needed. <clears throat> and by the look of all the gold that he's saving up, it looks like he is in fact going for the heart. Or going for the butterfly. <clears throat> or at least the Eagle Song. 
which I still think it would be more intelligent for him to actually go for the heart of Tarrasque. So, so that way he can make sure he can stay healthy between these fights. And if he does get low, he can actually blink out and wait that whole entire four seconds or three seconds I think it's for melee people. And then he'll uh, he'll be able to heal up and then continue farming while Bloodseeker cannot smell his blood anymore. Ancient Mage blinking towards the Ancients, killing Ancients since 1924. And the whole entire Dire Squad are around here. Just, you know, waiting for Roshan. They're going to go for Rosh. Rosh taking a bunch of damage. The pings do come on the map. Uh, Ancient Emperor's ulti can fly through, but it is not flying through its current point in time. We'll just click on him and see when it does fly through. But Roshan taking a bunch of damage. He will be going down here very soon. The pings do come on the map saying, hey, bro, something's up. These guys must be around that Rosh pit. Ancient Emperor's ulti flying through. It will be catching at the roar. Oh, yeah. At the worst possible time, they do now officially know about it. They're caught with everything, but it doesn't really matter. Invoker actually picked up the ages, and I don't know if Bloodseeker smells blood now. Nope, doesn't. Invoker a little bit too much HP. Scarith Mage might be working on Rod of Atos, might be trying to give himself a four staff uh, versus a Bloodseeker. I think four staff for Scarith Mage, specifically Scarith Mage, would not be the best of choices. Maybe a Rod of Atos to make sure that Bloodseeker can't chase as hard as he can before, or as hard as he did before. Uh, moving on to everything else, Bloodseeker is built, or does have the BKB finish. He also has a Sound Yasha, and he's working on what looks to be a butterfly. So that's going to be really nice for him. Uh, he could also try to go for a, a Mantis, or not Mantis, uh, Heaven's Halibur. Which, if he disassembles his Sanji Asha right this moment, he will in fact have himself a Heaven's Halibur, which would be nice, versus Ancient Mage until he pops that Mantis style. Then, Bloodseeker's Primer is going to die anyway. Speaking of the rest of the items, let's look at Ancient Apparition because he's working on the Aghanim Scepter, but it's the longest road that he's probably ever been on to that Ags, and I seriously doubt he'll be able to have it up anytime soon because he keeps dying. So is the life of support. And uh, so if you look at this last. Uh, sorry, well. Wrong button. If you look at the kills, deaths, and assists, you see the ancient person has died four times, which means that's a lot of gold to take, that was taken away from four different times. But he is staying, I mean, relatively well, relative to us. Oh man, hold. we got somebody in a little trouble. Bowden in a lot of trouble. Gonna be getting hit with a bunch of stuns and a bunch of damage, and he does officially go down, making himself a bunch of graves, and that is another death chalked up on his counter. Meanwhile, Earthshaker. Throws a fissure. Ah, uh, ancient person in a lot of trouble. He will be going down. Easy kill is easy. Radiant he did get silenced up by the orcas coming up from the invoker. The middle tower will be going down. Middle tower was smashed into pieces. So anti mage, anti mage, very interesting character that anti mage guy. So a lot of people. Oh wait, hold on. Before we do, we got a nice little fight happening towards these guys. Beautiful burst shot coming up for Sanki, catching two people. Stormspear will be getting silenced up by the orcas. Force bomb himself a hastrun, so he will be able to run away. Meanwhile, the middle tower, top tower does officially go down. Blessing able to pick up the kill on top of that, but he will be losing his life. Rapture can't fly through. BKB coming off at the right possible time. Miss dodges the burst shot, dodges everything. Actually throws out his ulti on top of his uh, Sanki. Sanki will be going down. Invoker trying to keep him alive, not going to be enough. Bloodseeker will be going down at the back of all this though. Earthshaker does have a fissure. He did already drop it, now he's in a lot of trouble. Blinks forward, able to throw another fissure in 4 seconds time. HMA says, bro, my blink is better than yours, and he's not going to be able to catch him. Catching too many fields over there, catching too many fields. So right, what I was going to say about HMA, um, there's something to talk about HMA as to why he's such a good carry, or why people play him as a carry. <clears throat> it has been said that HMA used to be played as... Okay, no, he's, he still plays as carry. I was going to say, it used to be said that Ancient Mage used to be played as another role, but I can't think of what other role he would be played as. Anyway, we've got a stump coming on top of Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit does go down. Beautiful fissure, or beautiful er, epicenter, ah, uh, whatever, Echo Slam. Coming for Earthshaker, but not enough to actually kill anybody. Barrider, not able to, uh, looking for a kill on top of Invoker. I don't think he'll be able to find it, but he's going to be able to try to kidnap, he's going to try to kidnap him. Not going to be able to get there soon enough, and his ultis are going to cool down too. But yes, okay, Ancient Mage has a carry, right. Why is HMH played as a carry? Besides the mana break thing, which is nice, and besides the survivability he has naturally, coming up from Spell Shield, um, the fact that he attacks very fast, that's one of the things um, that makes him a good carry. Now, there's this, this is thing in Dota called Base Attack Time, or BAT, or BAT, if I'm pronounce like that. But Base Attack Time for everybody, unless otherwise stated, oh, the courier, the courier for the Radiant or Dire is about to go down. Barrett are going to be able to claim that kill. That's essentially killing a tower right there. It's Barrett that would have himself a little bit there. Through all those derpy deaths, he does officially claim the courier and it doesn't really matter. And speaking of doesn't really matter, Antimage did build himself a heart of Tarrasque, so I'm actually very proud to see that. Instead of seeing the butterfly, um, I thought he was saving up money for an Eagle Song, but he was just trying to buy his uh, heart of Tarrasque. So his heart is officially up.
He now has a heart. He can work on his butterfly now. And he'll be, just be a big, big, big deal as far as a... Uh, or sorry, big target in these team fights. And the bigger a target you become, you just get more HP, get more survivability, and nobody really cares. Because they can't do Jack's squat. I mean, he gets hit with HM versus ulti, and he doesn't care. He's just at that level of, like, giving zero explicit words. But yes, okay, base attack time for Ancient Mage is 1.45, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> Which, the lower it is, the better it is. And, um, and before we talk about that, Barrett again caught out once again. He is going to get hit. No, sorry, Sankin getting caught with that uh, chilling touch. Not going to be able to find anything. Stun from Earthshaker does stop the initiation coming up from the Dire. And they do force him back. So, MYG doing a good job, Momo. <coughs> Momo, don't get caught up, bro. They need you for initiation. Plus, we can ulti flies on top of Anti Mage. Anti Mage doesn't really care. He's gonna go ahead and stand still. Eats a bunch of damage coming up inside. They're gonna go for the final on the backside. Centaur comes with a beautiful stun. Batra comes in the middle of everything. Momo trying to get what he can. He has himself a BKB, but it's not gonna really do too terribly much. He's taking a bunch of damage. Right clicks do come through on top of Blessinger. Blessinger does go down. Storm Spirit falls as well. They're trying to get this kill on top of Bat, but his BKB is lasting a little bit too long and he officially goes down. I think this might be all but GG, guys. Oh my gosh, my camera doesn't stop doing weird things. Inch Burst will be going down. Scarlet Mage is going to be trying to get that solo kill. Doesn't really matter. Can't really catch it. Just needs a few more right clicks. And speaking of right clicks, Inch Mage will be here. Star oh, Sunstrike. Sunstrike from Invoker's own point as usual. Scarlet Mage dodged a little bit of damage. Tornado Stick was officially finished up on him. <coughs> so that's nice for his region. Also nice for his uh, intelligence. It will make him do a little bit more damage with that Arcane Bolt. Radiance Middle Tower may need a hand. So yeah, Mage's base attack time is 1.45. In general, a hero, unless it's otherwise stated, is 1.7. So Mage has a really fast attack speed once he does max his attack speed up. Uh, just to put all that into perspective, Alchemist has the fastest attack speed that anybody can ever get because his base attack time, when he's ulti, is 1. <coughs> Which, like I said before, the lower it is, the better. So one, a base attack time of 1. Basically means that he attacks fast as all get out. Anyway, Blink 4 comes from Earthshaker. Earthshaker drops that ulti. Actually gets sound stuff on the backside of that. He's not going to be able to get anything except for a nice little damp Sorry, nice little chunk of damage here. Centaur Warner and crew force everybody to stay still. And they will be zipping forward. Trying to get this kill on top of the Centaur Warner. That's all they can really get. And that's not what you want to have. They're going to be able to do what they can to kill, like I said, a Centaur Warner. But it's just a Centaur Warner. That is not an anti-mage. Um, did... Okay, I was about to say, did... Did, uh... Plus, he can just blink forward. The ulti comes out on top of Sankey. Sankey gonna be taking a bunch of damage. Blessing could go down immediately. It is officially 3 a.m., guys. Look at the damage coming off of this guy. Blessing could versus Anti Mage, and Anti Mage is winning this fight handily. Blessing could looking for a target to kill. Not gonna be able to find anything. Trying to juke left, trying to juke right. Does officially juke into the grave. Anti Mage picks out that kill and says, Bro, you mad? You can't even touch me right now. 8,000 gold in his pockets right now. He can buy whatever the freak he wants. He is officially farming money. <laughs> and he's gonna go for that A Blade. That A Blade is what's gonna be his next big item. And GG well played comes out from Storm Spirit. They're gonna go ahead and tap out. GG's do Radiant's come through. Well played indeed. Antimates too terribly farmed. It is only 40 minutes into this game. Not even 40 minutes, 36 minutes into this game. And Antimates saying, bro, my farm is better than yours. And that is what I was saying before. Well, if this game goes late, it's gonna be very dangerous for MYG. And that came true because Blessseeker can't hold his own versus Antimates. Unless Blessseeker has ridiculous amounts of farm, Antimates gets ridiculously under farm. Anywho! My name is Cool Blue. I just brought you guys this cast of MYG versus ZK for this tournament, which is officially named Dota Spotted. I'm assuming that's the name of it. My bad if I call the wrong name, but the Dota Spotted tournament. And I hope you guys enjoy this game. This was the semifinals, so the team that won, which is officially ZK, they're going to be going to the finals, and we'll join them in the next set of matches to see who wins that best of three. So stay tuned for these videos, and as always with my videos, guys. My name is Cool Blue. Hope you guys enjoy the game, and I'll see you guys whenever.